Hello, welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. I'm out today with the CZ457 Thumbhole Laminate Stock. This is a heavier build with a heavy barrel and this is 17 HMR. It's a 20 inch long tube and I'm going to be doing some group shooting today and taking some shots on some steel plates at longer distances. Hope you enjoy, please stick with us for now. Key features to look at, the rifle is screw cut half inch by 20 for a sound moderator or muzzle brake. The forend very clearly fully free floats the barrel and maintains stiffness and rigidity so you're never going to get any kind of intermittent barrel contact. There's plenty of space for your hand to wrap it and also a secure stud underneath for bipod or sling. This rifle is fully compatible with CZ's interchangeable rim fire barrels in either 2.2, 2.2 WMR or 17 HMR. Scope mounting is via a spacious 11mm dovetail for conventional rim fire or air gun scope mounts. You can see fast bolt manipulation and a single position safety catch which doesn't lock the bolt handle. The trigger is super crisp and also fully adjustable. You can see there's a firing action indicator on the back of the shroud. The comb is a slightly hogs back shape and is somewhat wider than the standard 457CZ variants like the synthetic LRP or the carbon fibre limited edition one. The AT1 is also a slim cheek piece. I found it made my head roll over a little bit more, but some people with narrower jaws or smaller cheeks will find it equally comfortable as I find the slimmer stocked ones. The trigger guard's actually part of the laminate stock and you can see you've got a nicely stippled thumb hole here. There's also plenty of space on the underside for your supporting hand or rear bag to fit into very easily. I see this more of a prone or a bench shooting precision rifle. It's perhaps less likely to be used with a handhold on the front end, but having said that, there's plenty of space and in my hands which are larger can fit on here with no possibility of touching the barrel and I've got slightly re-entrant features here and facets which allows me good grip with both thumb and forefinger on the opposite side. That's also great in a hunting scenario because you can put a bipod down or a bag down and you've got stable support with the gun. The bolt's easy to release for cleaning, press the catch there, out it slides. You can see on the face here we've got two extractor claws and if I decock the bolt you can see the firing pin here which is a chisel tip and gives reliable ignition on suitable cartridges. Hornady 17 grain VMAX and 20 grain XTP cause no problems today, although some other brands did give me some issues. I don't think that's the rifle's fault though, I put that down to the ammunition. Recocking the bolt is as simple as that, and back in it goes. The stock is super smooth, it's beautifully finished with not a single mark evident anywhere. Stippling on the grip is also very, very tactile and nice to hold on to. There's a stud here for the rear sling mount, which makes you can give it a secure carry if you are using it as a hunting rifle. It's quite misty today, so it's not the best conditions for uh, shooting groups on paper, but we can see the target. We can aim precisely enough. I just don't think I'll be able to see my fall of shot quite as easily. Barrel length is 510 millimeters or 20 inches. The barrel diameter is 21.8 millimeters or 0.862 inches. Overall length is 975 millimeters or 38.5 inches. Overall weight is 3.63 kilograms or eight pounds. The trigger weighs 653 grams or 21 ounces and is fully adjustable. Length of pull is 363 millimeters or 14 and a quarter inches. Now I would estimate I've probably got a quarter inch aiming error on that, purely because of the light conditions and the difficulty seeing the target. But we've got good velocities there and we'll work through those and we'll work through those later. I have to say the 20 grain XTP are often my favourite ammunition in 17 HMR. I think it's because they're made in slightly lower volumes and I suspect the quality control on them might be just a little bit tighter. As you can see, it comes with a five shot magazine in 17 HMR or 22 WMR, of course. In the 22 versions, you've got the five and 10 cap round capability. This is a completely switch barrel capability rifle. So any CZ457 or 455 older barrel is of course interchangeable.
just in the couple of minutes it took me to reload and change ammunition there the lights just cleared a little bit the air's cleared a bit i've been able to up the magnification i've, I've halved my aiming error on that So I am actually going to go back now and shoot another group with the 17 HMR. But I won't chronograph these ones just because I've already done that once. So this will be group three top right. Had that been a rabbit or a hare or even a fox or something, I mean, of course, fox is definitely easier. You wouldn't have had anything like the aiming problem you get when you're aiming at small dots on pieces of paper. Sometimes not getting that perfect group on camera can be quite frustrating, but realistically it's the long-term usage of the rifle that impresses me, not just a single five-shot hole. I have to say, this is looking like quite a fast barrel. A lot of 17 inch miles, especially the shorter ones. You are down in the low 2500s with a 17 grain bullet. These are generally rated at 2650, if I remember correctly. And we are, as you can see on the chronograph readings, running up near, yeah, 2550. We're actually running um, nearly 100 feet per second faster, which is actually a, a, a nice occasional benefit from some rifles and barrel. Anyway, we'll move on, and now the next group will be with Winchester's polymer tip 15 and a half grain 17 HMR bullet. So let's program that in. I'll be very interested to see how these non-toxics shoot. Obviously, reducing the density of the bullet generally means it's got to either be longer or lighter. And that can vary with the twist rate of the barrel as to what the barrel's going to like. But generally, that's why you always see non-toxics lighter than lead jacketed bullets. So this is going to be group number four. Second row, target one. I seem to suffer continual problems with the Winchester ammunition and this box particularly gave me a lot of light strikes. I didn't put that down to the gun, it's purely the ammunition. I think it may have been damaged or flawed in some way. The chisel tip CZ firing pin design has been ultra consistent in all of the 457s I've used over the last year and a half, except with this particular ammunition type and brand. Now it does appear that this ammunition is giving me a light strike problem. I've had a couple now give me a dead man's click. So let's just do safe dry fire in the safe unload procedure. The gun is still stable, pointing at the backstop. How many seconds I'm counting you'll no doubt see on the video because the clock's ticking away. But I've got to probably about 20 in my head now. So I'm going to look away from the gun, put my hand underneath the bolt up and back and no surprise that's got a strike on it but no primer detonation so that's three rounds in that group let's try a fourth I'm just going to single load that one and then one more to make five It is of course quite easy to single load this rifle. I certainly won't put that down to as a rifle problem because I've got a strong strike mark on the brass. The ammunition may be slightly compromised. Back to the 17 grain VMAX now going to shoot some more groups because this is the ammunition that most people tend to use Hornady is easily available it's a good price and it generally seems to work quite well no light strike issues with Hornady for me this is target number five which is the center target
Well, I think I'm going to walk up to the target and have a look at some of those groups now, because I can't see them through the scope. Small 17 HMR bullet holes on blue spots. Well, let's go and have a look. So, having a quick look at how this is shot. Group number one, bit of a compromise aiming problem. Group number two, that was with the XTP. It actually shoots quite a good group, and I'd uh, got through the aiming problem a bit by then. We've still got five shots there, which is it's all right. Real work conditions, 100 meters, remember. This isn't some short range lab special. And group number three, we went back to the 17 bullet. Again, slightly more magnification, a bit of a better aiming solution. Uh, I'm going to work on that and shoot more groups, actually, because I think that's looking all right. The non-toxic, which we shot here, group three, it was a bit spattered all over the place because we had to keep messing around with the gun and dry fires. And back to 17 HMR again, group five. That was fine. We've got a few targets left now, so let's shoot a few more targets. Well, I've just been down and checked the target. It's not awesome, but it's realistic. These are real world conditions and the wind is just, you know, just picking up and out. It's probably still at breeze level, but I can see all the grass is moving, if not the actual wind flag up behind the target. So I'm gonna go a click left. I think I'm gonna go two clicks down, which should put me pretty much around point of zero, maybe. I'll maybe go that third click down. And I'm gonna stick now with just the 17 HMR Hornady. This is the 17 grain VMAX bullet. Now, there have been about 100 rounds down this barrel and it's been cleaned once since it was absolutely brand new and it will improve as it just beds in a little bit. But realistically, I think a lot of the times that people say that you can get tiny half inch, quarter inch, group, quarter inch groups, quarter MOA groups with 17 HMR, I've rarely to see one, if ever, in fact, and if I have ever seen one, it's generally been a complete chance occurrence within a string of many other shots. Bolt manipulation is fantastic and the trigger is fantastic. You can see this one's a thumb with a heavily stippled stock here for grip and the actual trigger guard is part of the laminate itself. That looks to be peppering the centre of the target. Definitely continue with these. Still running just around about 2,600 feet per second average velocity, which is more than pleasing. The point is I like shooting this gun. It's very, very stable off the bipod. You've got good length of pull on the stock. The cheek piece is perhaps a little bit broader than I would prefer, but I might actually put a central strip cheek razor on that anyway. But most importantly, the length of pull, with it being quite generous, makes the gun comfortable and it feels, you know, grown up sized. There's, of course, a fully free floating barrel here and we've got a stud there for the bipod. So it's incredibly stable, either prone or off the bench. I'm just shooting off the bench today. The mist is coming back in a little bit down there. You know, I'm shooting quite quickly. I'm not really one to wait around because I can see the wind flag moving ever so slightly now and it's just starting to change around between shots. So if you shoot five shots for one group in five different imperceptibly different wind conditions, yeah, you're gonna open the group up slightly. One group does not make a rifle, in my opinion you've got to keep shooting it at least 25, 25 rounds, five, five shot groups, if not more. And over time that will stabilize and you will learn to trust it. 
And it's all very well saying, I have a half inch group rifle that did it once and the rest of the time it shoots two inches. What you really want is a rifle that's gonna shoot, you know, three quarters of an inch to an inch, hopefully MOA, all the time, every time you pick it up. Certainly for hunting purposes, for target purposes, you might want more than that. I could just feel the wind pick up slightly then. So anyway, we've had 15 sequential rounds into three groups there. Let's go have, have a look at those close up. So, put a click on left, I'm gonna put another click left on. Although we've got a slight left to right breeze. Mm, I might want that other left click on. A um, little bit of vertical still, but I think that's generally down to ammunition inconsistency and the reality of 17 HMR. There's nothing wrong with a rifle which is joyfully pleasant and stable to shoot from the bench. So, I'm going to put, well, I might put that other click left on, not sure, but I'm going to put some range on it now and shoot some steel at longer distance. But you can see there, as the, as the barrel heats up and fouls up, maybe that's just you know, dropping those off a little bit. But we've definitely got core samples there, there's four there and one, there we've maybe got three and two, and again, five, maybe a four and a one. It's definitely more consistent though now. And we'll get more so as it's shot more. Let's try some longer distances. Interestingly, that shoots impressively well at 150 metres. Um, I think partly that is because I've just got a better aiming solution. I've got a nice large yellow circle and all I have to do is centralise it. Camera's up there. And we've also got the wind flag up there, which isn't doing a huge deal. But my 0.5 milli radian correction, it, it, it was pretty much spot on. That was actually there when I was zeroed because I just adjusted it slightly so I can tweak this back now when I get home because I've taken photographs of my turrets which are on my phone which is a simple thing everybody can do. So I know that is my 150 metre mark and I'm going to shoot five more. Now, those are shot quite quickly. You know, as the group appeared and the group evolved, I had more of a distinct aiming spot in the middle of that nice bright yellow circle. But I'm very happy with that. And it just goes to show that sometimes you get too perplexed with performance on paper. And when you actually start moving out, changing multiple distances and different targets, you actually have a lot more fun. A little bit of wind on, usual hunting requirements, you know, real conditions, that's how life is. And that, you know, it's probably slightly larger than perfect, but that's a rabbit sized group there. You'll take out a rabbit or a hare, certainly a fox with that. But again, it's a 17 HMR, ranges have to be kept reasonable. When you go out and zero your rifle, it's so easy just to get your smartphone out and take a picture of the turrets where they are. Because if you uh, have to start twiddling about with it before you've set it up or even when you're testing different ammunition types, it makes life easy. So you can always go back to where you were for your 100 meter zero. So I was shooting there, 
for 150 meters and I'm going to go there for 175 now. One of the things I love about CZs is the bolt operation is perfectly smooth. Bolt release catch is here, no problem choking that out. And you get the beautifully made bolt with two extractor claws and then obviously a nice chisel tip square firing pin. So if I just pop that through there, can we see this chisel tip pin in here? I'm just gonna try and expose that for you. So you get a nice chisel tip pin just there. Gives you a strong strike on anything other than ammunition, which is clearly in itself not quite right. And the other thing I like is the fact that the triggers can be adjusted and they will last the lifetime of the rifle because unlike some guns, which seem to be terrified of a lawsuit or something, you can adjust the CZ out of the stock and you can take up the first stage pressures, alter the weight, and you can also alter sear engagement to make sure you've got a super crisp feel exactly as you want it. And that's not just now at shot one or shot 50, that's at shot 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 throughout the life of the rifle. So I got my wind call slightly wrong there, but immediately back on target for the correction for the second shot. It's great to see that the chronograph and the ballistic calculator is giving me excellent drops and it's completely in correlation with the turrets on this element scope. Well, believe it or not, this must be a first for me. I've actually run out of ammunition. I thought I'd be frugal today and I'll just bring a couple of hundred rounds. Uh, the 17 grain VMAX has come to its end. Uh, I'm loving that. I've got plenty more back in the armory. But I'm going to switch over to the uh, the XTP and have a bit have a few shots with this. It'll probably give me a slightly different result going straight into a 175 meter target, but we can spot those easily enough on steel, and it allows me to keep shooting. I'm enjoying using this gun, and that for me is the big factor. So many guns, I test, I review, I prefer the word review. But I review them and some of them, you know, I, I do the basic procedures and then I'm kind of done with it, send it back. Others, I just enjoy shooting. So let's go for the middle of the three spots. which actually looks like it's hit about 0.2 milliradians low. I'd already put on a wind correction for the first shot string anyway of That's really quite pleasing. My first shot was aimed here, struck there. Got my wind call wrong, so I hadn't really dialed anything. I thought I'll just go with it. Um, I aimed about here, and I got three shots there, one shot there. Quite happy with that. I then ran out of ammunition, but I dialed across about six clicks. So I went onto the XTP. So with the 20 grain XTP aim here, which wasn't zeroed or correctly ballistically compensated for, but I knew it'd be close. We shot, we shot five in just down here. And that is on a life-size Muntjac target. More than happy with the accuracy of that rifle and the precision of it to be sure. It's definitely very consistent, easy and stable to shoot. And we're, now, we're a few clicks away there from re-zeroing with that ammunition and you know, learning the ballistics a little bit more, compensating a little bit better. I'm very happy with the capability of this CZ. The trigger is beautiful. Um, Magazine changes are fine, no problem there. It's a polymer unit, very smooth, 
feeds ammunition smoothly. Again, this is a slightly bulkier stock, this one. I've been shooting the LRP a lot, and also the Sporter, the synthetics a lot. I do like those. This is definitely a more chunky, more sustainable stock. It's a very, it's a very nice looking stock. It's visually extremely attractive with the, um, the brown and gray laminate colors. But it is a bit more of a hogsback shape and it is slightly broader in the cheek piece, which will and won't suit some people depending on the size of your cheekbone. <laughs> Magazines load very easily, single column, five shot capacity, and just pop them in from the top. It's not actually difficult to single load the rifle either, because especially with a slightly longer slimmer 17 HMR case, it's fairly simple. In a backup situation, to get it in the gun a lot more easily than it is to get it out of the ammunition box, because that just pops in there and it's closed. So I'm now on five plus one capacity. The gun's on the bag, it's stable. There's six rounds on there. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching that video. Please like, please subscribe, and please comment because that's what makes me do these videos for you. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the capability of the gun, some of the information, some of the details about it, some of the benefits, downsides perhaps, and its capabilities on paper and on steel with different types of 17 HMR ammunition. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.